in. Welcome to Webinar Wednesday here at Lulu. Uh, I see that several of you have hopped in. So go ahead and jump in the chat and let us know where you're from. How is your week going? And what do you hope to learn today? Uh, let us know if you have a project already published, if you have something in the works that you're hoping to get ready for the fall season. Um, we'd love to hear where you're at and what you're doing. So I know that you aren't a shy bunch. So hop in when you can and let us know how you are. So uh, today is Webinar Wednesday. As I mentioned, I am Chelsea. I have a bit of a different background today. I just want to address it. If we have anyone sensitive to the outdoors, I am in the woods. So we've got some friends. I'll pop up. Uh, so they're joining us today and hopefully they won't um, come to life and join the conversation. That would be horrifying. So, uh, so today we are here to learn how to boost uh, book sales with a stellar marketing plan in the fall. It is July, but fall will be right around the corner. It'll be here before we know it. Uh, that is either exciting or terrifying to you. A little bit of both. both. Yeah, a little <laughs> bit of both for me. I, I love the fall. I love cooler weather. But with that means that there's a lot of things that, that happen and that you need to prepare for. So as you can see, I'm joined by Kathy Mice. Um, I will turn it over to her in just a second. So hello, everyone. So let's see. We've got Angela, Carrie Ann, Tim, Julie, Stephen, Robin. Tim, Anthony, and Christian, Amanda. So, hey, everybody. Thank you so much for hopping in. Um, and you guys are hailing from all over the place today. So, as I said, I am in the, the mountains of North Carolina, Robbinsville area. If you have ever been uh, to this part of the world, it's beautiful, beautiful. Come out here. I would highly recommend it. Um, my friends also encourage you to, <laughs> to visit. Um, so, yeah. So, I'm going to turn it over to Kathy in just a second. Um, I just want to remind everyone, oh, in the UK, it's extremely hot. Yeah, I know. Warm temperatures are prepped for. Another reason to look forward to fall. So um, we're going to turn it over to Kathy in just a second. I would uh, like to encourage everyone. I see that several of you have found the chat. So thank you so much for hopping in. We also have a Q&A tab. So Kathy is going to run through and share all of her knowledge with us. If you have a question, uh, let's go ahead and drop that in the Q&A tab. I will be keeping an eye on it. Oh, several from Raleigh. Nice. That's usually where I hail as well. Um, so yeah, go ahead and keep the conversation going. We'll turn it over to Kathy. Drop your questions in the chat. Also, everyone who registered today, you will receive a recording of today's event. So if you tune in late or you have to hop in, hop out early, you will get the recording. We will also post this to our YouTube channel. So if you're not subscribed, uh, go to youtube.com. You can search for Lulu University. That is one of our series that we do. Uh, yes, so thank you everybody for tuning in. And Kathy is with me. I'm going to read her bio and turn it over. So hold on tight. This is a good one. All right. So <laughs> Kathy Mice is the founder and CEO of Bublish, a complete publishing solution for today's independent authors. Bublish offers multi level editing, cover and interior design, marketing, and distribution through Lulu. Exciting. And other channels. With more than 30 years of experience in the media and publishing industries, Kathy has served in a wide variety of editorial management positions at some of the industry's leading companies, including CBS and Forbes. A veteran professional writer, editor, ghostwriter, and successful publishing entrepreneur, Kathy speaks and blogs regularly on the subject of writing, book promotion, author branding, social marketing, and book discoverability. She has appeared at many conferences, including Book Expo America, Women in Media, Grub Street, PubSmart, Author U, the San Francisco Writers Conference, and Andy Recon, among others. We're lucky to have her. So excited to be here. Today, she's going to be teaching us about boosting fall book sales with a stellar marketing plan. Kathy, welcome to the stage. Thank you. Thanks for the intro. I really appreciate it. And I'm here in Charleston, so hot as Hades, beautiful. but beautiful city. <laughs> Luckily, we're both coming to you from air conditioning room, so we, can, we can sweat it out. <laughs> there you go. We can sweat it out. So I'm going to just switch over and share my screen and pull up the presentation and play from the start. So Chelsea, tell me if you can see full screen now. I can see. It looks great. All right, great. So yes, um, as Chelsea said, boost fall book sales with a stellar marketing plan. And I just have to give all of you a pat on the back for doing this in July because two thirds of all books are sold in the fall between September and the end of the year. So it is a huge season and planning early is going to give you a lot of advantages. This morning, just to uh, remind us all that it, the, the season is coming, I got some kind of uh, a newsletter that said, 
that holiday shoppers are shopping earlier than ever. So again, kudos to you for being here because planning is really um, the key to effective marketing more than anything. Chelsea kind of told you a little bit about me. I will just add that, you know, as an editor and writer, I really, I know what it takes to make a living off of your writing. Um, I think too close to my heart is really helping authors bring their stories to life. It's, I still edit, I still ghostwrite, um, even as the CEO of Bublish. So um, it's, a, it's a pleasure to be here and help you guys on the marketing uh, side of things. And we're going to cover a lot today. So uh, just to give you an overview, starting with goals, why marketing goals matter, um, what are marketing buckets, and how can they help you plan, and how to create a, a simple marketing organizer, a marketing calendar. And then I'm going to get to show you some free and paid tools to, to help you with your marketing, every aspect of it. And then we'll have the Q&A at the end. So I'm a big believer in goals, uh, that goals should be the place you start your publishing journey. You know, what do you want to achieve as an author, as a writer, um, as a creative, as a self-publisher? And the same thing applies with marketing. What is it that you want to achieve? And with, when you start with goals, um, it really changes what you do, how you do it. And you start to realize that you can achieve your goals because you start to make them more bite-sized, more achievable. And that starts momentum. So your marketing goals should really inform all the strategies that you take. For example, you might be a first-time author looking for exco exposure. Or you could be marketing a series of multiple books. So that has a whole separate type of strategy to it. Um, maybe you need to maximize your profit. Or maybe you need more reviews. Maybe you're trying to grow your email list, which is a really important thing for authors to do. Or are you testing messages on different audiences? Those are just an example of the many, many, many goals that you might have as an author trying to market your book. So once you articulate your goals, it does change everything. And you're going to see that throughout the entirety of this presentation. But the next thing is, who do you need to speak to in order to achieve that particular goal? So, you know, first of all, knowing the audience for your book, your genre, or the topic that you write about if you're a nonfiction, understanding that audience is really key. And if you haven't done that work and really you know, studied your genre or your topic, I would highly recommend that, you know, what are the channels they use to discover books? What type of format do they like? Are they audio people or paperback people? Or do they buy hardcovers? Or do they like eBooks or multiple genres? You know, what social platforms are they on? So business authors might be on LinkedIn, but, you know, political types are on Twitter. Um, a certain audiences are more on Facebook or Instagram. And now book talk is so big. So, if you know your audience and you learn about them, you kind of understand where they are and how to speak to them. Additionally, you know, we always think about readers as our audience, but if you're trying to um, get into bookstores, that's not your audience. Your audience then is more of a, a bookstore buyer, right? So you're in a wholesale channel, or if you're trying to get into libraries, that's uh, librarians that are acquisition librarians. So. Uh, a reviewer trying to get a review, that could be someone on NetGalley, or it could be uh, your audience could be a, a paid editorial, or it could be influencers. So the audience changes uh, as it relates to the goal that you have. And, and you have to really make sure those are aligned. And the third thing before you really jump into the whole um, planning and executing phase of marketing is just to decide on a budget. Now, the next slide that we're going to talk about, the buckets, um, will influence the budget. So you can't go out and say, I want to, you know, be a New York Times bestselling author. That's my goal. Um, you know, you define your audience. And then you said, and I've got five bucks to do this. That's not going to work, right? That's an expensive strategy. But there are a lot of free strategies and there are a lot of very affordable strategies. But you do have to have a um, some kind of a budget for some of the goals that you're going to have and some of the strategies that you're going to follow. So, you know, there's lots of terminology in marketing. There's marketing campaigns, there's um, marketing strategies. I just call them marketing buckets to keep it simple. So, you know, once you understand um, what you're trying to achieve, what the, the goal of the marketing um, 
strategy is, and then you know who you're talking to and you have a budget, you can easily start to look at the buckets that you can choose. This is the how. How am I going to reach this audience that I need to speak to in order to achieve my goal? Um, and that may be something like paid advertising. It may be a podcast or a webinar. Um, for example, today, you know, Chelsea is reaching you through a webinar. I am reaching you through a webinar and we're using an education strategy to build community and grow our brand so that you know that we know our stuff and that we help you. So um, she's also mentioned that she's got a YouTube channel. And so she's going to put a version of this on YouTube. So that would be a social media channel. So often you have these buckets kind of combined to reach your goal. So one goal might have three or four buckets that come under it in order to achieve the goal. Um, and maybe the goal is short term and maybe the goal is long term. So one thing about when you articulate your goals, you know, you want to make sure you're as specific as possible. And that way you'll know, um, you know, exactly what you want to achieve. I want to grow my email list by 20% in 30 days. There's two numbers in there quantifying. There's, there's a time constraint. I want to do it in this amount of time. And then there's a specific uh, target that you're trying to reach. Grow my email list by 20% in 30 days. Or perhaps you want to um, reach, meaning be exposed to, um, you know, 10,000 new readers in the next three months. And so that might involve a paid marketing strategy, a paid advertising strategy. Um, it might include a price promotion so that price isn't a, um, a friction point. So more people get it. You might even put your book for free. Maybe you run a 24 hours for free and then you do a few of those throughout the three months to, to boost visibility, discoverability. So again, you'll see the relationship between how you um, articulate your goals and then get very specific about them. And then you choose, you, you know your audience and then you choose your marketing buckets. So um, again, this is an event. You've got content marketing like blogging. Uh, you can guest blog. If you don't have a big audience for your, um, for your own website and your own blog, you can guest blog. I'm a guest on this webinar, which has a large audience. So um, visiting other people's blogs and um, writing for them, they get content, which is great for them. And then you get exposure to new people. So content marketing is a fabulous way. Newsletters, you can do um, webinars are a type of content. Podcasts are a type of content. Social media is a kind of um, content when you post. Um, guest blogging, blogging yourself. There's all types of um, content marketing that you can do. There are all kinds of events. You know, the thing that happened during COVID that was kind of nice, um, you know, Chelsea was mentioning all the conferences. I kind of miss all those in-person conferences. They're coming back little by little, but people did online events and online conferences and online readings and online story hours. So um, you can be very creative now. You can do face uh, FaceTime live. Uh, most of the social platforms now have live uh, streamcasting opportunities for you. So events are great. And real world events, you know, if you're a children's author, festivals, but that all takes planning, right? So you got to sign up for the festival way in advance. You got to make sure um, you have the books you need for that. And we're going to talk about how to prepare for all of these things um, on the next couple of slides. But the point is there's, there's a lot of opportunities. And again, start with those goals. Who's the audience that you need to speak to to achieve those goals? And you know about where they are and how they find your books. You've informed yourself, you've done your research. This is a great time of year to be doing that. And then you choose the way, the how to reach them most effectively because you know where they are. They're going to these events. They love online events. They're big on um, Instagram. They love Booktop. Um, maybe publicity is going to be part of your strategy. Um, again, if you're doing nonfiction, you know, is there some kind of tie-in that you can have to um, current events or uh, popular themes that are going on in the news and in culture. And you can speak into that. You can lean into those moments with a publicity strategy. And publicity has become really great um, 
because it does create a lot of backlinks. So if you have a website, um, we always, when we build websites for authors, um, we always um, make sure that they have backlinks coming to their their website and, and press releases are a great way to do that. So there's all kinds of tools and buckets at your, um, at your fingertips. You just have to make sure they're aligned with the audience, the how, how are you going to reach the right audience for that goal? So now you think about the planning piece of it. And I like to use two different things, um, an organizer and a calendar. Um, and as soon as you have those top tier things, you got your goal, got your audience, you got your buckets to achieve the goal and reach the audience. Um, you can now start organizing. I'm going to show you um, some examples of this in a minute, but let's just go with the high level overview here. So um, on the organizer side, I love to use Google spreadsheets to plan these out. So if you're um, a Gmail user, you can just open a Google spreadsheet or you can put it on in Excel. Or, you know, if you are someone who really likes to use more of a, a planner type of thing, you can use planners if you like to write things down. But the key is that this is a place where after you've kind of chosen those buckets that are um, going to make sense for you, you're going to write out an actual plan to execute what you uh, want to achieve. Um, that means you're going to clearly talk about the goal that you want to achieve, the intended audience, um, you need to reach the marketing bucket. Um, and then under that marketing bucket, for example, this is a webinar series. So this happens every Wednesday. So maybe you're going to have a social post and it has to happen every Wednesday. So that bucket is kind of ongoing. Um, and so the event name and the date um, that you are going to execute, that's the organizer side of it. And then the calendar side of it kind of supports the organization piece. So once you've mapped everything out in an organized fashion and you have a plan, um, the calendar gets dates around opportunities, events, holidays, special dates, big one in the fall for the holidays is like Black Friday. You know, they have um, uh, Small Business Saturday. Uh, you got Halloween, you got Thanksgiving, you got all the holidays um, in December. Um, and there's a million other holidays. So if they're important to your book, they're going on your calendar. But in addition to that, the calendar becomes the place where you take the steps in the organizer, which I'm going to show you in a minute, and you place them on the calendar. So if you have a show that's like November 2nd, um, and it's a, a real world festival, book festival in your town or nearby, what are the steps that you need to do um, in order to make that a reality that you're going to be there and have a successful show? So that might start sometime now. Maybe you have to sign up for the event and get a booth. Um, maybe it's too much. So you want to do it with another author. So you got to coordinate. You've got to get books there. You've got to have some marketing assets, like um, maybe a nice postcard. Maybe you're going to do a giveaway so that you can draw people to your booth. So all that planning has all these little micro steps that fall under the bucket that might be a real world event in your town at a book festival. Um, so all those little steps are going to be on your calendar as well. So the date of the festival and all the deadlines you have to meet, registering, when do your books need to arrive, you know, when do you have to plan out your assets for the show, um, when do you have to finalize them. So say you were doing postcards and you're going to Staples to have them printed, what date do you need them for so you can be relaxed, um, and the little steps to prepare, like actually put the postcard together should all be on your calendar. So let's take a quick look um, at, this is one that I just kind of made up. So um, there's a lot of duplication here, but I just wanted to show you, I, I put this into a Google spreadsheet and I uh, just did it by month. And then I talked about the goal, um, you know, expose my book to 10,000 new readers this month. And then you might look at the buckets that you're going to do um, some of them, again, social on the second line there is ongoing, but what are the dates you're going to post? It's maybe going to be aligned um, with um, the 10,000 new readers. So you might decide, well, I'm going to boost it on Facebook. Um, if you have a newsletter, you might be emailing your list 
um, to tell them uh, to share it with their audiences. So you're taking your list and inviting them to help be a brand ambassador for your book. When is that going to go out? So you're going to have to cre uh, create the, um, uh, the assets for that, the actual content for that. Maybe it's a photo, maybe it's, uh, you know, the content of the newsletter. Um, you're also going to talk about that prep work and the audience and the budget that you're going to have. Um, maybe because price promotions are great to reach more readers, you can, you know, drop the price of your book to nine, your ebook to 99 cents for three days and tell your, you know, uh, your followers that tell your social followers that, um, Maybe you would also, as part of the strategy to um, expose your book to 10,000 new readers this month, you would do a Facebook live reading and maybe have some paid advertising to promote that event. And so that would need a budget, as would um, the price promotion, because you would probably take it to a place like uh, Bargain Booksy or Book Gorilla or uh, Book Bub if you get accepted to um, make sure that you get a lot more people. Um, aware because they have these huge email lists. So you'll see that the um, the organization of this really follows the process that I'm outlining. So, you know, the goal, the audience is there, the bucket you're going to use, the budget, uh, then you're breaking it down by the events that you're, you're going to um, have tied to those buckets and the dates that you're going to execute on those events, um, and then the prep work that you have to do. Um, so hopefully that's kind of helpful, even though it's was just kind of a quick mock-up to kind of give you an idea of how you can organize a whole season of events around a couple of important goals. And maybe the goal, you know, um, of growing your, your email list or um, getting 10 through 10,000, you know, exposure to 10,000 new readers would take you three months, right? Based on, you know, your bandwidth as um an author and your budget, and um, maybe you're just starting out versus being farther down the road. So all of those things need to play into uh, the organization and the expectations of you know what you can actually achieve. But this planner really kind of makes it concrete, so you can look at it and know you know over the course of this three month period for the fall, this is what I'm going to do. And this is what you want to be doing now. You want to map out your whole fall, September, October. If you have a book launch during that time, um, you know, you know, that takes a lot of planning. Like, are you going to go into pre-order before the actual launch? You know, do you have launch events? Do you have advertising planned around it? Um, and additionally, I know Chelsea will probably tell you uh, the book business printing books gets really, really busy in the fall. And so timelines to actually get your books delivered can be, you know, pushed out. And so again, planning really makes sure that you get those things you need in order to achieve your goals and um, deliver on the, the marketing strategy that you're using. It makes it possible because you're planning ahead. Um, and then the marketing calendar, um, like I said, um, I did, I did have a picture of my calendar and I was like, oh my gosh, look at that September calendar already. It was a little overwhelming. So I didn't <laughs> overwhelm anyone. So I just changed it back out. But again, all of those things that you saw on the planner should be in here, all the steps. And, and then it's also a great place to brainstorm because if you take out a calendar or you Google, you know, what are like, what are all the odd little um, I mean, there's every month has a theme, every day has a theme, and you can find those. And sometimes they're just perfect for your um, for your book. So take the time to look at the opportunities that might arise in your calendar, and also also you know be aware that there are all kinds of um, you know there's there's Cyber Week, which happens you know right after um, Black Friday and Small Business Saturday, and so. If you're going to play in that space when the it is a buying frenzy, like a lot of people participate, it's a huge, huge amount of commerce that takes place. Like you really have to have your game on for that. So look at the opportunities now, plan out and say, OK, this year I can take on this, this and this. And I'm going to use these buckets and reach this audience and achieve these goals. But 
you know, I'm putting this one on the calendar for next year because I didn't even know, um, you know, hop and rabbit day was October 7th. I mean, there's so many <laughs> crazy little holidays now. Uh, so, uh, the last, you know, big thing that I really wanted to show you guys, um, were just some of the free and paid tools, many of them very affordable that can help you, um, in every aspect, right? So, you know, anything you're doing, you also have to, um, like create the assets or go to a platform and sign up for things. And I wanted to show you a few that um, I just think are um, really useful um, for the organization. Again, Google Sheets and Google Calendar. And if you're not, you know, into the digital use of those tools, just get yourself a planner. Another great organization tool that we use for our social media on Bublish is called Trello. And I believe there's a free version of Trello that you can use. And um, it's uh, little cards. And so you make the card of the event and you can move it through different phases. So that's a good one to check out. Um, on the advertising side, you know, there's a lot of different types of advertising. You know, you have Facebook, like we, um, we run Facebook, Amazon ads, but we also can place ads in Publishers Weekly. Um, and we've had authors who've requested ads in places like Foreign Affairs or specific newspapers. So um, think outside the box, but Facebook and Amazon ads are huge tools um, that are available to authors. Um, but it could be like a blog um, or a review site that is for your genre. So it might not be the biggest audience, but it's really focused on your genre. So it's, you know, power readers in that genre. So it might be a great place to advertise. And because their audience is smaller, it's more affordable. So think outside the box. And again, great time of year to research those things with, with a couple of, you know, just get in Google and, you know, blogs about thrillers, um, blogs about, you know, sci-fi, uh, blogs about memoir, review sites for memoir, all of those things will give you a bunch of sites. And again, just create a brainstorming Google sheet and just throw them up there with the link so that when you go into your planning phase, you have all these resources kind of organized and ready to say, okay, I'm going to look at the schedule for this particular blog or review site or freebie site um, and, and see if I can get an advertising slot in um, in October. And I will just say, because, you know, this is really a big um, and competitive buying time, not just for books, but for products in general, planning ahead because those slots disappear. They also d tend to disappear if you're going to do price promotions as well. So getting those that organized now and signing up and having everything ready will give you a significant edge. Um, and you might not have the opportunity to do it last minute. On the social tools, um, I'll tell you about one thing we have at Bublish. So we have book bubbles, which are um, excerpting tools. That's a, And they are shared on social media. So you can excerpt from um, anywhere in your book. Uh, you upload your book, only you can see it. You select the excerpt, then you give us an author insight, the story behind the story, and you share it on social media and publish. And every week we put those in front of 600,000 readers um, and we hashtag them and tease them. And so they can go out to your audience and we help you grow your audience by bringing them to lots of new readers who follow hashtags in different genres. So that's one tool for social Um Linktree is a great tool um, that we use on our social sites. There's a free and a paid version, but it's pretty inexpensive. And it allows you to take, say, on Instagram, where you can only have one link in your bio, you can turn that into all different calls to action. It's uh, linktr.ee. So um, linktr.ee is how you find it. It's a great little tool. So, And you can change those based on... You know, if you're having a price promotion, you can change out that call to action. You can put a little shaker on it so that when people click the link in your bio on your social sites, they um, they really see that right away. It pops out at them. And uh, Hootsuite is one. Uh, social, Sprout Social. There's a lot of um, online tools to schedule things so you can create um, your social posts, schedule them 
uh, in many places. Others are built in. Facebook has its own scheduling tool built into it. So, you know, learning about those options um, are really great. For reviews, of course, you know, Amazon reviews, but we have, we work with NetGalley for a lot of um, bookstore owners, a lot of um, librarians and power reviewers are there. And uh, because we do it at scale, it's much more affordable to work through what's called a co-op than try to pay for NetGalley yourself. Reader's Favorite is another one that we sponsor. A lot of things they do is very affordable to get um, a lot of exposure there and get reviews. Uh, Book Life by Publishers Weekly is another one that we recommend because it is um, just for uh, indies. And if they really like your book, they have a whole award program. Um, but Publishers Weekly could pick it up. And, you know, you always want to do kind of a, in our opinion, a, a paid um, editorial strategy and then free reader reviews. But just getting reviews alone, that's an important goal. And it's a goal that, like for us um, at Publish, we would encourage you to get certain reviews before you advertise. Because if you push a lot of people to a product page and there's no review there to say this is the best book in the world, you may pay to get that person there, but they don't convert because they don't recognize your name and they're not sure, right? So they just click away. So sometimes in order to achieve one goal, you have to have these little goals in front of it. And reviews are a perfect example of some of that foundational work. And again, getting that stuff ready now before the season is a great idea. Let me check my time here. Okay, good. I got just um, a few more minutes. I'm going to take a sip of my tea. So another um, area, email. So, you know, I'm sure Chelsea has had many webinars just on email capture because building your own email list is one of the most important things you can do as an author because if someone opts in, you know, they're basically giving you permission to speak to them. So social is a great place to start conversations, but it's, it's uh, you know, a little less, you know, commitment. But if you have, again, Linktree and they click on your bio and they can go and get a free something on your website or um, if you don't have a website, you know, BookFunnel is a great tool that you can set up um, to capture emails. Find a way, maybe even just a landing page, find a way to take people from all this content you put out on social, on anything that you do, and draw them back through that bio with multiple links and one of them, something that you can give away to invite them to your uh, onto your list. So now you can speak to them and you can provide value and interesting content to keep them engaged. But then as the next book comes out or your first book comes out um, or a novella, or you have a big event that, you know, you'd like them to help you spread the word, or you'd like them to come and attend that email list becomes, you know, really, really valuable. So we are big believers in that. And one of the tools that it's like when we build a website, um, a great tool to start is MailChimp. Um, it's very affordable. There are much more sophisticated, they're called uh, CRMs, much more sophisticated ones, but MailChimp does have a lot of features. So we always build the website. So a pop-up comes in and, and then offers the first few chapters of a book for an email opt-in. So they put their first name and they put their email and then MailChimp automatically sends them the thank you that you set up with a little link to a hosted PDF of the first few chapters of your book. And so um, it's a great way to, to capture emails. Um, again, that's something to do now in the slow times. Think about all those strategies, like how are you going to get people to opt into your email so that in the fall, when you actually have these events, you know, you've got a bigger list of people that are engaged with your content and sharing your content and talking about you. Hello Bar is another one that we really like um, that allows you to just put a bar or an opt-in. If you don't use MailChimp, you can use Hello Bar um, and set up a kind of a an email capture. It's super easy to install. Um, I think there's also a free version and then you can go to the paid version. And like I said, book funnel is a great one, especially if you don't have a website for design, because again, this is a great time to be 
deciding what are the assets that I need? You know, do I need a sell sheet to go to libraries and bookstores? Do I need social posts? Because I'm going to be posting a lot more during this campaign that I'm running in, you know, September and October. So I'm going to sit down on a hot Thursday and spend three hours creating social posts so that they're all lined up and I don't have to be frantic and think about what I'm posting. We love Canva. Um, again, they have free and paid versions. Um, they have all the post size. So LinkedIn post, you just click the template. They have pre-designed things that you can use and you can alter. So if you don't know how to do the graphic design yourself, or you don't want to pay someone, if you're willing to learn and, you know, I may run a publishing technology, but I am not a technologist. So if I can learn Canva and I love this site, it's very intuitive and you can upload things to it that you bring in and combine them with elements that they have. Um, some of the, the things uh, that have been in this presentation are from Canva that I have put in little logos and design things. So um, big believer in that and almost anything you can create brochures on there and and they have a printing set up again so you can send them to a printer and have them sent to your house or you can take the file that they output and take it to your own printer if you like to work locally um, but pretty much anything that you need to design you can do on canva and then if you you know need something that's a little bit more sophisticated fiverr is a great place you know for more sophisticated graphics um, uh, and, and certain things you might need for your event. So those two are just great to have in your back pocket. And just, you know, a recap, um, benefits of a, of a marketing plan. So what happens, what changes when you do this and when you do it early, like you guys are. So again, pat on the back for being here. You can take full advantage of all those opportunities because you've looked at them in advance and you've planned for them and you've got a roadmap for success. Um, you are much more effective at executing on your goals and your ideas to achieve those goals. And you've studied your audience. So um, again, that will make you more effective because all great marketing should speak to someone specifically. And that person that you're speaking to should be the person who can help you achieve your goal because they are the librarian, the reviewer, the um, the reader in your genre. And every campaign is different. Every bucket you use um, and every strategy you use and every goal has a different audience. So plan that out. Um, your marketing dollars are going to go farther because you're organized, you're more effective, you know who you're talking to, you know how you're talking to them, you have everything lined up. So when you spend money, um, like advertising with reviews, you have the reviews. So when you pay for the advertising, they get there and you just see a product page that's just perfectly optimized with a great cover, sound title, good book description, the right pricing. Um, everything is going to compel them to buy. And so that makes your marketing dollars go farther. Um, you do, you are able to achieve your goals because there's a plan and you stop hating book marketing because it starts working for you. And, you know, anytime you have success, even those small successes you build and you build, um, and marketing is a long-term play. You know, you, these things do not happen overnight, set goals that make sense that you can achieve, find success, set another goal, find success and build on that and just be in it for the long term. And it will happen um, if you follow a plan. And you're gonna just build a really strong uh, foundation for continued success. And just before we go back on camera, I just did wanna invite you, bublish.com backslash Lulu backslash. We work very closely with Lulu. We love working with Lulu authors. So if you go there, um, we've got, you know, special offers for you um, and you can talk with one of our um, publishing experts. Um, you can promote your book uh, with Book Bubbles and we'd love to help you on your publishing journey. So let me stop sharing. And. Hello. Great Hello. job. Thanks. <laughs> that was a lot of very incredible information. What I really loved is it's a very actionable plan. So a lot of times we'll have these webinars and you're talking about ideas or concepts, but there's still a little bit of 
it's still a little bit abstract on how you can apply it to you in your situation. So I so appreciate you giving the templates and the tools. Uh, I completely understand you didn't want to share your September calendar. It is <laughs> calendars are filling up very, very fast. So I appreciate that. And thank you, Kathy. So everybody who is here and like to ask a question, please drop it in the Q&A. Um, and I'll, I see that Philip asked a question, and I will get into that in a second. It's pretty niche, so we'll see what kind of answers we can come up with for you. But I wanted to um, touch on something you spoke about, which, of course, fall, the holidays, everyone's getting ready for this season. But I saw an uh, uh, email, like Kathy was saying, where the emails are already starting. So probably you're already seeing the emails about getting ready for holiday. I saw a marketing email the other day that was defining holidays as just a day where people are acting out of the ordinary, that you may be encouraged to act slightly different than you might any other day. So uh, I see that uh, I think Diana um, had dropped in. Her book is about creating a life of successes. So, or creating a life of success. So, you know, if you go sign up for a national day calendar, I get those emails and every day it'll tell you the host of days that are celebrated. It could be, yeah, like dark chocolate day or dog day or cat day or glass window maker day. I mean, it's everything you can think of. So, everything. So there might be a self-care day or a day for you to yes. take some time and, um, you know, do some pampering. So if your book is about how to create a life of success, maybe doing a promo on self-care day or a uh, goal setting day or something like that might be a fun way to get in front of more people and encourage them to act. So I know that we think of holidays as like the big ones, the heavy hitters, but people are celebrating stuff every single day. So uh, National Day Calendar is a great way to just kind of see the quirkier fun or lesser known events that might be out there. So to get us started, um, I will look at Philip's question. And again, the Q&A only tab is a great way to drop your questions. I will be looking through the chat, but Philip is asking, this is a doozy to get us started, but let's get a bit more into niche market research. Example, sure. my novel takes place in Asia, Hong Kong, and Thailand. I'd like to find an Asian distributor of English language titles in the region. The only one I know of is Bangkok-based Asia Books. How do I learn about other distributors? So I would say... Google. I mean, Google can be your best friend in situations like that. Kathy, you might have more information. I, I'm not sure. Yeah. Uh, if you would, if you would like to email me, I can't pull up all the names, but we do, we do <laughs> go to some very unique places in the world. So we do have a list um, uh, that I could share with you that might be helpful. I'm not sure, but I don't know them off the top of my head. So um, info at publish.com and just say, I saw Kathy on a webinar and I, I'd be happy to try to pull those together for you if that helps. Um, and you may, you know, also think about, you know, some translation um, types mm -hmm. of selling your rights. Um, that's another thing that, you know, we could do a whole webinar on that, but, you know, selling your rights to uh, a, 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 a publisher in a country that'll translate it and purchase your rights from you. Um, we've, uh, just recently getting into that. And there's just incredible potential for that for authors. Mm -hmm. um, but then that publisher, you know, owns the rights in China just for that translation. But think of that, how well they know that market, right? Um, so there's, uh, and there's very good money in it. So. Yes. Great answer. Yeah. That's very more in depth than just Google it. So I appreciate you weighing <laughs> in on that one. Um, all right. So we've got a lot of great feedback um, on, on the programming, on the information. So thank you, Kathy. Carrie Ann says she just did a Flamingo Day. So great application of that information as well. Love it. Yeah. So um, if you didn't catch that, I did drop it in the chat, info at uh, And Kathy is asking, how do you get into libraries? Yeah. So libraries are um, in the part of the wholesale market. So you've like retail where you buy at one of the big retailers where they sell books. And then wholesale is the bookstore and library market, um, you know, without having someone selling your book into those. Um, you know, Ingram is an example of a, a wholesale marketplace that is also a distributor and handles the print on demand. So you have to discount your book. So they're expecting a wholesale discount, which is uh, usually like 55 percent for bookstores, but can be lower for libraries. So um, and then libraries, not so much, but like bookstores like returnability. So, you know, it is a it is a different kind of market, but. You can also just go start by going to your local library. Um, one thing that we uh, recommend if you're really going to focus on the library market is having what's called a PCIP block, which is, I'm not going to remember what it stands for, but on your copyright page, 
Um, you can get their services and you pay somewhere around a hundred dollars and they take all the categories and subjects and topics, which are always surprising to us when we see it, we're like, Oh, forgot about that. But they put in this little block that's very specific that can be scanned at libraries. And so then the book gets shelved. So librarians love PCIP blocks. Um, and if you go Google PCIP blocks, you can find that. Awesome. Thank you for that insight. And David is asking, is entering writing competitions any good to increase one's book marketing? Oh, absolutely. That's another great thing. Like get those on the calendar. Like there are genre specific ones, there are general ones. You know, Book Life is one that has one. Um, IBPA um, has the, uh, what are they called? The, I forgot the name of it. They oh, have the great. Benjamin Franklin. Benjamin Franklin. Franklin yes. work. So there's a bunch. You do have to be careful. There are some that are, I don't think, legit, but there's a lot of good ones. As long as you look up reviews and they're not charging a fortune, it's a reasonable fee. Um, and ask other authors, you know, check. Um, I think they're great. That to me, like, um, you know, uh, you put award winning at the top of your book description. That's a great way to tell people. It's like a, it's stronger than a review. So yes. Mm -hmm. uh, and those, again, you have to submit in the timeline. Um, you have to make sure your copyright's in the right year. So um, that all takes planning too. You got to make sure your book's going to be available in the format they want when they want it and make sure the sign up happens um, on time. So there's planning there. Put it on that calendar. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Always goes back to the calendar. Yeah, definitely you want to read the fine print. And as Kathy was saying, make sure that you're approaching them in the way that they want to be approached and submit everything, you know, the way they've requested it. Um, so thank you for that question, David. And Stephen is asking, all right, so he's saying thank you so much for the actionable webinar. You've reminded me how important reviews are. That's his first step. So I also edit and publish people's books for them. I strive to offer non-exclusive contracts with my authors. However, if a big time publisher comes along and wants to publish a book or a series by one of my authors, I'd like to get in on that. Is it possible to have a non-exclusive contract with a buyout clause? For example, the publisher would have to pay me a certain percentage of profits from the book sold going forward, something like that. Wow, Kathy, we're, we're going all across the board. Ah, give me five minutes, I'm gonna go get my legal degree. <laughs> Um, well, all I can say for you to you is, you know, publishing, even self-publishing, it's about rights. And, you know, as an author, there are a lot of rights. I'll give you an interesting example on our platform. Um, the So we had a very uh, popular author in women's fiction, and she kept the rights to her paperback and her ebook where she was doing really well but she didn't want to pay for the audiobook to be produced and she was approached by a traditional audiobook publisher that's all they do is audiobooks and she sold her rights to them um just for the audiobook so what's interesting there i think that authors just have a lot of choices when it comes to they can be what's called a hybrid um, author. I mean, I know there's hybrid publishing, but a hybrid author just means every project you do and every format has a set of rights and you can be self-published in certain ones and you can be traditionally published in other formats. The same thing with what we were talking about selling your rights. Um, so you can be self-published in America, but sell your rights to a Chinese publisher who's going to translate it and only sell that translated version in China, or you can say second English rights and just sell them that they can buy the English rights and only sell it in China. Now think of how many territories there are around the world. So what I love about what's happening in publishing is that the author is, you know, really in the driver's seat and has so many things at their fingertips, which is phenomenal. Yes, I love talking about that as well. You know, we have e-commerce solutions and obviously just self-publishing places like Publish where you as an author, as a content creator, can pick and choose the ecosystem that's gonna work for you. And it doesn't have to look like anything you've done before. And so yeah. that's really exciting to me about the, the trajectory that self-publishing or independent publishing is on. So thank you very much, um, Stephen, for that question. I don't think we gave so, you your full answer, but I, right. I feel <laughs> We're like We're not I, lawyers, yeah. So you may have to dive in a little bit deeper, right. but I think that was a pretty good starting point it, for that. It's a great, it, well, yeah, and it, but it's a great question, but I- yes. uh, 
uh, I would talk to a lawyer actually, I mean, or an agent, an agent could probably help um, talk to you about those kinds of clauses. Yeah, and there are several conferences. So we talked a little bit about the IBPA, but there are several author-centric conferences that'll do like agent meetings or you kind of have access, you can pitch to an agent or just kind of have conversations with them about what they're looking for and kind of glean some of their industry knowledge. So always a great reference to go ahead and talk to people who may know what you're looking for. Um, And T. Renarda is asking, what do you recommend for a book in Spanish? I've written my book in Spanish and English. And would like to know about marketing for the Spanish community. So I would say this probably isn't that different from marketing to the English community. Obviously, there are different nuances there. But uh, Kathy, what's your take on that question? Yeah. And again, this is about knowing the channels where your audience engages with um, content. So a whole host of shows and blogs and um, newspapers and magazines and online sites that, you know, you want to kind of study. And again, what's the goal, um, for the Spanish version? Like, um, you know, is it maximizing profits? Is it growing an email list that's, um, Spanish language? Is it, um, getting your book in front of as many people as you can for discoverability? Cause you're writing three more. And this is, is the first book in a series, you know, establish the goals. Um, Just because the audience is Spanish, it still has to be narrowed down, right? That's just a language just like English. Like there are many, many audiences and not all of them are going to be for your book. So in that Spanish speaking audience, you know, who are the groups of people you need to talk to and where are they finding books and where are they finding their information? Um, You know, Spanish Speakers are uh, very big on Facebook. So, you know, maybe Facebook advertising would be really, really awesome. Um, there's, But there's definitely different avenues that you want to take and you want to just research that first. Um, and there are also Latino book awards as well. If you Google that, um, I think you'll find some that are very, and more and more of them popping up to, you know, diversity in publishing is uh, always need more of that. So there's more things popping up so, like that. So you should explore those as well. Yeah, those are great recommendations. All right. So this is what going back, put your lawyer hat on. So again, don't know how, how fully we can answer this question, but I, I am sure that we can give you some information that will be helpful. So Carrie Ann is asking, I have planned to write a series uh, of famous people interested in knowing about copyright and trademark. She followed that up a bit with uh, having a very hard time navigating what I can and cannot do with copyright infringement with photos and titles. Yes. So I actually uh, have a guest lawyer who's going to blog on our uh, site. She's given me it. So next week you will see a blog on this because we have, um, you know, some high level authors who are telling their live stories, for example, and, and in doing so, even if you cover up people's names, like what happens, like what are, you know, where and copyright on photos, we have someone doing a historical book on a major incident that happened about 40 years ago with, um, uh, and she has the same issue that this uh, author is having. So um, she, we introduced her to this lawyer, um, for a review, uh, of, and there are legal reviews of books. Another thing is Authors Guild is a great resource. If you, um, you visit Authors Guild, you can become a member. They have a lot of resources. Um, they also do, uh, can match you up with a lawyer, you know, for your specific things. I mean, we're even, you know, with translation rights and, actually some um, TV rights now really learning the role of lawyers. When you get to a certain level, you really do need um, some legal advice. So, and some of that you can get for free, um, but some of it you, you should have, you know, actual legal counsel for. I hope that helps. Authors Guild I think is great. Yeah. Thank you for that suggestion. And I just dropped the Authors Guild uh, link in the chat and the Q and A as well. Um, But yeah, I think at the end of the day, you know, working with some legal counsel on these projects, um, one of our Lulu authors had had an experience with, um, you know, going to doctors. She just had a medical situation. She wanted to write about what that was like or going through that. But working with some of the doctors and, you know, going through all that, it it was very important for her to have that piece. So, of course, depending on how sensitive your story is and how many people you're involving, uh, it's definitely a good idea to try to get that legal counsel if possible. 
or you know, do your research and speak to other authors who may have gone through a similar process. So thank yeah. you very much for that question. Oh, this is a good one from David. Okay, is there any site or place uh, or place or person that has a list of bloggers, writing websites that offer reviews. Googling it brings up a lot of dubious sites. So before I turn it over to Kathy, I do want to say that is so true. Anything that you do for independent authors or self-publishing, you have to do your research. Please don't just Google it and then go with the first option that comes up unless you've looked into it a bit and seen some other customer testimonials. Um, but I would say there are so many, uh, uh, you know, like Joanna, uh, Creative Pen, Joanna Pen is great. Um, and I'm totally blanking on another newsletter that I subscribe to that is, she's fantastic as well, but there Jane are definitely, Friedman. yes, Jane Friedman. Yeah. So a lot of industry, yeah. Professionals and, and people who are out there who have done great work in, in doing the light work ally, um, the Alliance of independent mm -hmm. authors is another great resource. Uh, yep. And Kathy, yep. I'll let you, uh, chime in with any thoughts you have. Yeah, no, uh, agree with all of the ones that you said. We actually did start to just create a Google sheet cause I'm a big fan. Um, as things, anything we learned of and give access to that, happy to share it if um, people would like it. I just have to get the link, but I, do, I don't, I would not be able to find that. I don't know, can we send it out with um, uh, the replay or something? We could absolutely post it if you want to share it with our with us and we can put it in the YouTube channel. If it's downloadable, I think I can add it to the email that'll come out. So a few okay. of you have been asking how you can rewatch it. The email address you use to register for this webinar, you will be sent the replay, I think, within 24 hours. Um, and if you don't catch it there, then you can also watch it on our YouTube channel, which should be posted um, by the end of day today. So um, we, I'm going to do a last call for questions. I know that we're coming up at the end of the hour. Um, but Elizabeth, I can answer this question for you for Lulu and Kathy. You know, of course, feel free to hop in if you have some different thoughts. So Elizabeth is asking, is it possible to contribute a portion of profits directly to a charitable organization so you do not need to deal with the accounting? I feel in my book, Poems with a Purpose, where mind over mood equals mood over mouth. <laughs> I love that. Uh, <laughs> can offer a comforting tone to behavior changes, which can be helpful to organizations that give support to people in need. So um, this is strictly for Lulu and our process. I know that the answer is yes. If you publish through Lulu to the Lulu bookstore, when you're setting up your tax and payment information, you can put in um, the organization that you're working with or that you would like to contribute some of your revenue to. So you would just need to know um, either their EIN, some of their, maybe their W9. So just a bit of the basic accounting information you can set up with their email address. And then you can designate of the 100% of revenue um, or, or of all of your revenue, the, the total revenue you're getting, you know, what percentage do you want to go to this organization? So we make it pretty love easy that. to do that. Yeah, and I love seeing this, especially around the holidays. You see a ton of um, really purpose-based publishing, if you will, that want to, you know, we have a lot of animal influencers that is exciting, um, but maybe they'll raise money for um, animal shelters or different organizations like that. So at Lulu, you can't absolutely do that. It's just a matter of kind of putting in that information as you publish. Um, and Kathy, I'll let you add anything that you'd like there. Yeah, no, I love that. That's a great feature. Um, yes. That's a fabulous feature. Yeah. All right. And that's, Always. A, that's a great campaign too. You know, people yes. really do. If, if, if you want to reach more people and do good in the world, like the holidays are a great time to do that. You know, maybe it's in a, like a, a certain number of days. It doesn't even have to be for good, right? It can be something you do for a short period of time, maybe tied to an event that you're doing. So Great stuff. Yeah, that. yeah, I, that's a great suggestion. And of course, the holidays are so, so good for that. And we love to be able to see those projects. And more and more data is coming out that says people want to spend their money with causes and, and uh, creators that align with the things that they yeah. care about. So it could be, a, like Kathy was saying, a great way to reach a new audience if you're really causal based and can align with some of those issues that are affecting others as well. So great question. Um, and thank you, Kathy, for your feedback. All right. Last, last call. Uh, again, let's see. Um, all right. Well, Elizabeth is asking just as a follow up. Do you need to get permission from the organization you want to donate to? I would say let them know that you're they're doing that. I have yet to find an organization that said we do not want your money, but <laughs> always good to say, hey, if you see a blank check coming in or a check or some money that you didn't account for. I am behind that. And that's probably, that's a great icebreaker. Hey, I'm going to be giving you money. Look out. Um, all right. There's one last question I'll take from Christopher. And I don't have any insight on this one, Kathy. You might. Um, okay. But do you have any insight on Blue Ink Review or other paid reviewer services? Yeah, Blue Ink is a good one. I think they're um, they're not inexpensive, but 
they do some cataloging that is really um, strong and it is one way to get into library journal, I believe. Mm -hmm. So like you were really going after the library market. Um, we've had some books get into library journal, but it's not easy. Um, and blue ink is a way to get into library journal. Um, but they, they do a lot of that back end stuff. Um, you know, Kirkus, um, we've worked really c closely with Kirkus. Um, they've also developed some new products. Like we had, they have like the rising Indies. And if you get like a starred review or a strong review from Kirkus, it can open some doors to some select services that we've tried out with our authors and been very pleased with. Um, I think all of, uh, and you know, Book Life is Publishers Weekly's way of opening up the world to um, self-published authors and it's great. And they also have an award program. We've had some authors win awards through them and, and then just get great reviews. And it is um, book life by publishers weekly. So it has a lot of clout. They have good reviewers. Um, so I'm, I am a fan of, and those are editorial reviews, whereas reader reviews, maybe gold stars or thumbs up or whatever on different platforms. But um, there are editorial reviews and I'm a big believer in getting some paid ones if you can afford it. And if you can't, you know, try to reach out to some influencers and see if you might get some people and they don't have to be, you know, uh, the biggest influencers in the world, as long as they're influencers of note in your particular genre, it might be another author, it might be a librarian, it might be a bookstore owner, it could be, you know, the mayor of your town uh, or someone, you know, who knows about your topic if it's nonfiction. And that's another way. So a mix of that, I think, is a smart way to do it. Yes, thank you for that. And also, Christopher, if you go to lulu.com slash partners, we do have a couple. I believe Book Life is on there. Chanticleer Reviews is another organization That's we've worked one. with. Yeah, mm -hmm. so there are several different that, that you can work with for different price points, depending on what your budget is. All right, I'm going to close it out. I will give you, I'm going to put this question to you, Kathy. Last one. I, again, have no authority on this. Uh, any suggestions on time legal? management? You know, no, it's not, it's not legal. Any <laughs> suggestions on time management with kids? I only have a cat. He is very accommodating. So Kathy, if you have any tips on time management with kids. <laughs> I am sending my fourth child to college this fall. And as I told Chelsea, we sold our house and my husband and I are renting on an island for the winter. So, um, so I, your advice is get through it. And on the other side, it's very exciting. <laughs> Uh, so yes, I understand that, you know, I remember hiding in the pantry just to be able to read something I needed to read. So I believe I'm a big believer in, you know, time buckets as well. So go really early in the morning, make it your time and, and don't, you know, just give up your writing time because you're marketing, just make sure you say, okay, this is writing time and it's sacrosanct and this is marketing time. Um, uh, but you know, carving out some time that isn't right in the middle of the day when they really need you uh, early evening. And then, you know, having the partner say on a weekend, your turn a little bit, I need a few hours every Saturday morning from eight to 10. Um, but again, that planner, making sure it's on your calendar, all those things psychologically help you stick to the plan and, and make that space you need in your wife, your life. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That was a Freudian slip right there. <laughs> Need in your life. <laughs> well, thank you. I appreciate that one. And thank you, everybody, so much for the questions. Kathy, thank you so much for your insight. This is very, very informative. We've gotten great feedback already. I hope that everyone will rewatch this as you need um, and, and use these steps. They're all very actionable. And like Kathy said, writing these things down, anything you can do to stack the deck in your favor is so important and so worth your time. So again, kudos to everyone who is um, eager enough and interested enough to start now on holiday marketing. It'll be here yes. before you know it. Yes, so please uh, check out Bublish, follow them at Bublish Me. Um, I dropped the, the email in there, info at bublish.com if you need anything else. We will be sending out the recording. I hope you all watch it. Thank you so much to everyone who spent time with us today. I hope you have a wonderful Wednesday and a great rest of your, rest of your week. So thank you so much, and we'll see you next time. And thank you, Kathy, and I hope you have thank a great you. day. Thank you. Thanks, Bye, Chelsea. everybody. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye.